let's be real. It's hard to stick to a routine. We want to start healthy habits and read our Bibles and grow a relationship with the Lord. But how do we actually do that? Or better yet, how do we stay consistent in doing that? Listen, I am literally in the same boat as you. I struggle with sticking to the habits that I set up for myself to do and staying consistent with doing them. The last couple of months, I've been slacking. Today, I'm getting back into a routine and staying consistent with my daily habits. And I want you to come along with me so we can grow together. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. I'm Ashley. Subscribe to grow your relationship with the Lord and reach your full potential in God this year. And without further ado, let's start creating those healthy habits. Can we all agree that this is the hardest habit to stay consistent in? Like, I'm struggling here. I try to wake up between 6 and 6.30, but sometimes I struggle with pressing snooze and then waking up at 8 and then I just feel bad about myself. When you know your why, it's easier to stay consistent. But waking up early gives me time to spend with Jesus, journal, work out, and eat a healthy and nourishing breakfast all before I start work, so I know that it's worth it. After I make my coffee, I go upstairs and read my Bible. A lot of you wonder how to start reading the Bible. And the number one thing I'd suggest you to do is to have a plan. Listen, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. A few plans I recommend are the Change Your Life Daily Bible by Becky Tarabasi. That's the one I'm reading. The Blue Book by Jim Branch. And if you want something more personal, I have a Bible study membership called The Tree that's going to help you have a strong community of believers to grow with. You can learn to read and understand the Bible and apply it to your life and develop a routine where you consistently spend time with the Lord and read the Bible daily. I also love to journal my thoughts or anything that stood out to me while I was reading. Next, I pray. I usually follow a prayer model called ACTS, which stands for Admiration, Confession, Thanksgiving, and Supplication. First, I admire God and praise Him for who He is. Then, I confess my sins and anything that's on my heart that's getting in the way between me and the Lord. Then, I say what I'm thankful for. I try to come up with three things every day. Then, I ask God for help in my life and others' lives. Starting my day with Jesus, even if it's just 30 minutes, helps me to see everything with an eternal perspective and gives me the strength that I need for the day. After I read my Bible, I typically go work out. I realize that if I didn't schedule a time for this in the morning, it wouldn't get done. Stephen Covey said, the key is not to prioritize what's on your schedule, but to schedule your priorities. One of those priorities for me is moving my body daily. Not to lose weight, not to look a certain way, but to have an energy for the day and to steward the body that God gave me. I typically listen to an uplifting podcast as I work out. Today's is the Craig Groeschel Leadership Podcast. You've got to listen to it. It's so good. And I do the Kayla Itzine Sweat BBG app. It includes three days of strength training, legs, arms, and abs, and three days of cardio. Today is an abs day, and it's only 28 minutes, so I certainly can squeeze it in before I start my work day. Whatever movement you decide to do, make sure it's something you overall enjoy, not to look skinnier, but to take care of and honor the body that God gave you. After I exercise, it's time for breakfast. I love to eat a healthy breakfast before I start my day. For anyone wondering, I am wearing That's Joy sweatshirt. One of my best friends, Cece, just launched a podcast. It's called That's Joy. I'll link it down below, the sweatshirt and the podcast. Our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, so I try to treat mine as such. Today, I made a chocolate protein shake. So yummy. Throughout the day, I have foods that will give me energy for the day. I find that when I count calories, I become obsessed with food and can't stop thinking about it. So instead, I try to eat intuitively. 
which all that means is I pay attention to what my body is craving at that time and stop eating when I feel fullness. Each meal, I try to include one source of protein, one healthy fat, one carb, and one fiber. Those four give me nutrients for each of my meals. You won't have energy for your day if you are putting the wrong food in your body, similarly to if you put bad fuel in your car. That doesn't mean you never have dessert or pizza. It's about balance. Try to eat foods that will steward your body well and give you energy for the day. Now, in the middle of the day, in between work, I like to get outside with my dog and pray. 1 Peter 5.7 says, cast your anxieties on the Lord because he cares for you. This walk, it's around 15 minutes. I just lift anything that is on my heart that I need to lift up to the Lord, and I give him any anxiety that I'm struggling with. And then I thank God for the many blessings in my life. After work today, I decided to get my dinner together and go to a friend's house. Let's go. I could have eaten dinner by myself after a long day of work, but instead I decided to eat with a friend. Hebrews 10.25 says, And let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. It's easy to isolate and do everything by ourselves. It is much harder to reach out, but by reaching out to friends and intentionally getting out there, you are building such a joyful life filled with rich relationships. And this life, it's all about relationships. Make a list of 15 people you can reach out to and invest in. Text them and ask them to hang out. Literally do it today. All right, so this just might be the hardest thing. Apart from waking up, going to bed early. If we're gonna wake up early, we need to go to bed early. I am a night owl by nature, so I have to like force myself to go to bed early. But I know that when I wake up in the morning early and I feel energized, I got a lot of sleep, there's nothing better than that, except for Jesus. But it's it all starts here. I had to leave my friend's house early for this one, but I realized that nothing really groundbreaking happens for me after 10 p.m. It's easy to stay up late talking on the phone. It's easy to research the latest celeb news. It's easy to scroll on Pinterest till midnight. But is it always beneficial? We have to give up good things so we can intentionally live a fulfilling life. 30 minutes to an hour before I wanna be asleep, I start to wind down. I do my skincare routine. I put away my phone, that is essential. I like to cross off my habits that I got done for the day in my habit tracker. This kind of is an incentive for me to keep going. I really recommend that you get a habit tracker. I have one in the description below, so you can just download mine or you can go to the app that I suggest in the description. I also make sure to read a book before bed for around 20 minutes because it helps me fall asleep. This is the book I'm reading right now and it's amazing. Then I try to read a psalm, journal, or pray for the next 10 minutes. And at that point, I start to get tired and I usually just drift off to sleep. Listen, to have something you've never had, you must do things you've never done. In doing these seven habits, it might be difficult at first. You might have to give up aspects of your life you were once really comfortable with. But oh, what growth is on the other side. Perhaps we have to say no to the good things so we can ultimately say yes to a God-honoring, purposeful, intentional life. And in my eyes, the sacrifice is worth it. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos. I love you all so much, and I believe in you. Bye, friends.